and welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. And um, we dress the part. We dress the part. You got to keep warm. You got to survive. And it's not because we're in Canada. <laughs> because it's actually boiling hot out today. It's True. Super hot today. True. And so uh, we're suffering for our art here. <laughs> we're gonna bring a movie to you, which I think is not necessarily classified as a horror movie. It's more. Uh, drama adventure. I think it's officially classified. Officially, yeah. but uh, we're bringing it to you because we think that this movie is true, true horror. It is 2009's *The Road*. The movie was adapted from the novel uh, from Cormac McCarthy. I think the movie, though, is a great uh, adaptation, though. Oh yeah, uh, pretty yeah, much, sure. al almost yeah. word for word. Yeah. It was directed by uh, John Hillcoat. I know he did *Lawless*. Yeah, which, which is you, a fantastic. Which you really like. I've never seen it, but you yeah. say it's really good. He did a lot of music videos for uh, one of my favorite bands of all time. He did a bunch of uh, Depeche Mode music videos in the early 2000s for their Exciter album. And he did some Nick Cave uh, music videos. And, and it's funny you mentioned Nick Cave because Nick Cave did the music. You wouldn't know to listen to it. No, because it's no. like very orchestral yeah. and there's a lot of piano in it and stuff like that. But it's very like... It's perfect for this movie. Uh, movie stars our good old buddy Vigo, Vigo yeah. Mortensen. He was, I'm not going to mention the big blockbusters he was in because we all know that. <laughs> uh, but I do want to mention the fact he was in Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. <laughs> With 10-4. Uh, yeah. uh, Noah, uh, just 15, just 15 seconds. seconds. <laughs> it also stars Cody Smith McPhee. He was in uh, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. He's also in the new X-Men movies. He's Nightcrawler in X-Men Apocalypse, and I believe he's continuing Nightcrawler in the next X-Men movie. And also has a lot of like little cameos. We yeah. got uh, Robert Duvall in there. Yeah. Guy Pierce. Charlize Theron. Yeah. The movie starts out. Uh, this is the it's the great thing about this movie. It sets the tone instantly, and it starts out with them waking up in this in this world, this shitty dark post-apocalyptic world. You get introduced to the first two characters, and really the only two important characters of the whole movie, I yeah. would say. Uh, Viggo Mortensen plays, like, the dad. and uh, But he's the dad to uh, Cody Smith McPhee, his little, his little boy. He checks his gun, he checks the barrel of the gun, and he makes sure that he still has his two bullets. The, the thing about that is that those bullets are not meant to kill anybody else. They're just meant for him and his son. I think that really boils down to how frightening the movie is because yeah. when, when you think about just that concept about how the world has gotten so bad where <laughs> the only two bullets you got left you're keeping for yourself. <laughs> yeah. The movie is kind of peppered uh, with flashbacks and uh, one of the flashbacks shows Charlize Theron who plays uh, his wife and she kind of says that they must make it to the coast, they must make it south. Yeah. where the weather will be warmer and they'll be able to well, survive. Viggo Mortensen narrates and he, he lays it all out. The biggest thing to worry about is cannibalism. Your shoes. You're walking all day, every day. <laughs> yeah, you gotta worry about your shoes. And uh, they're just pushing a shopping cart with all of their worldly possessions in it. Along the road, they, they go to sleep in an abandoned car at the side. All of a sudden, he, the dad jolts awake and they hear an engine coming. And there's a tunnel. And all of a sudden, the dad, he, he freaks out. He knows, right, that there's other people coming. And he grabs his son and he rushes him off into the woods. And uh, they show these people coming through the tunnel in this, in this kind of beat-up, makeshift pickup truck. They all got rifles. Some of them are wearing gas masks. One of them goes for, to take a leak in the woods. And uh, Viggo Mortensen's there, and the guy notices him. Yeah. Eh? This guy's a creepy dude that they run into the woods with. Why don't you come on back to the truck? Get you some to eat. You don't have anything to eat. He knows. Yeah. Eh? He knows what these these are bad dudes. There's a tense standoff, but needless to say, they they get through it. When they come across this house, they break in. There's nobody home, and uh, Viggo Mortensen's kind of looking around the kitchen, scrounging around trying to find food or whatever. Yeah. And he sees a uh, latch on the in the floor, and it's locked. And he rips the lock off, and they go downstairs. Again, we're not going to reveal what they find down there. It is yeah. horrifying. It's it a defines... horrifying scene. When I first watched this movie, my girlfriend at the time, that scene yeah. 
haunted her and got yeah. to her. And that that tells you something right yeah. there. Right? It's the scene after too, right? Yeah, the scene after where oh. they've, they've ran out of the house and they're kind of hiding in the woods waiting till it gets dark enough yep. where they can disappear without anyone noticing their movement and what they hear happen in the house. You can paint the picture in your own mind about yeah. what's happening. Everything about it, this movie stays with you. It's yeah. like imprinted into your brain. Yeah. And you never forget it. Man. There are some happy moments in this movie, though. You know, they, yep. they find a, a bunker with a bunch of food. Which is, they find the, the yep. thing is stocked. It hasn't been... And it's close to a house, too. So, like, during the day, they go and have a shower and clean up. And then at night, they go and hide in the bunker. And they have, yeah. you know, some canned food. You're so happy for them. Yeah, you feel like, you for feel them. You feel like you're really like, oh, like you're so happy that they found some sort of pleasure in life That's to some right. degree. You know, just... Food. Yeah, food and a sh bit of shelter, and yeah. they're warm, and they're laughing yeah. when they're talking. And at the first sign, you really get that, that the Vigo's character is starting to lose it a bit. Right. Because they just hear a dog barking in the distance. Yeah. And then he's like, we got to go, we can't stay here, it's not safe. Yeah. It's very well hidden, and they, they abandon all this stuff just because he's so paranoid, because he's so paranoid of other people. Yeah, and they just kind of collect what they can c carry or wheel yeah. in this kind of cart. They run into uh, Robert Duvall on the uh, the road as Eli. He's yeah. the only person in this movie with a name, I believe. A good chunk of the interaction is ad-libbed. And this is where they kind of first start to talk about God and stuff. But it's extremely important because where's religion in all of this anymore, yeah. right? They question, it's like, if there is a God, how could he have let all this happen, right? There's another important scene, which is a very sad scene. It's not a haunt. It, 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 actually, you know, I guess it is a haunting scene because yeah. I think about it, and it's kind of it, the scene kind of haunts me a bit. You feel it you haunts feel me because haunt. it's so sad. Kid falls asleep, and the man's away, and someone takes their stuff, and they end up catching up to him, and they take their stuff back. But it really shows how much Vigo has lost his humanity as to yeah. what he does to this guy uh, who himself is just trying to survive in this awful, god-awful, piece-of-shit world. They do reach the coast. Yep. But I think that's as far as we're going to go, as far as plot goes, because we don't want to wreck anything. But they, they do reach their destination, what they find there. It's up to you to watch the movie if you haven't seen it, to find out what they find at the coast. The whole movie is all cloudy. You know, there's not one spot of sunlight in the whole movie. There's a scene uh, where they're... I think it's where the dad is trying to show the son how to kill himself. Oh, yeah, that scene where it's... I think it's oh. pretty early in the movie, too, where he's like, yeah. okay, well, this is how you do it. Make sure that you're pointing right up. Yeah. It's like, what a... That, again, horrifying. This movie is horrifying in a way very opposite of a typical horror movie. There's no yeah. jump scares. Yeah. There's no gore. It's just the thought of this world and the thought of having to live through this and the thought of being in their shoes yeah. is what's scary about it. For me, it's one of the scariest movies for that. The road is kind of symbolic as well, right? Because it's the journey between the dad and his son inside. Yeah, how they change, how this world has changed... And it's changed them, them, right? Mostly the dad, because I think the son is a little bit too young. Yep. Because he was born into this world. Right. He's not quite as jaded. Yeah. The pacing, we were talking about the pacing of this movie. And there's a lot of just surviving, which is, you yeah. know, there's not much dialogue, because it's just them two. As soon as you start to think, okay, well, hmm, when is this going to pick up a bit? As soon as you start to think that, ah, yeah. something happens. Like, yeah. the pacing is perfect. They don't leave you in the lurch long enough that you get bored. Exactly. It keeps you right on the edge of that. It starts to go down, and then all of a sudden it picks... And it it doesn't just pick up a bit, it shoots up. Yeah. Like, man, you get in an interaction with these people, and it's like, whoa. This movie this movie is largely, I think, forgotten. So in the last decade, I <laughs> uh, think of some great movies that have been made. A lot of people don't say, oh, The Road. One of the best movies I've seen in the past 10 years. Yeah, for uh, sure. As far as apocalypse movies goes, I think it's the best apocalypse yeah. movie because it's so different from all the others. It's not all big action and adventure. 2012. All that kind of stuff. This is the complete opposite of that movie. Maybe that's why it's a little forgotten because it's not yeah. um, a big 
It's not eye candy. It's not a big yeah. eye candy movie. I know a lot of people that I talk talk to about it. They're like, oh, well, that movie's depressing. Yeah, I don't like it. Well, it is depressing. And, and it's it is. Fucking, it's so depressing and sad. Yeah, it but, is. But it's supposed to be. But I think that's... I think that hindered the movie because word gets around and it's like, oh, well, it, it's like that. I don't want to go watch some depressing movie. And yeah, and, and, yeah, and, I, and I, think, I think that really hindered it. The novel was a best-selling novel, so you think that would have been, you know... They all seem best-selling. Yeah, <laughs> they every, all have everything's, the sticker. Yeah. <laughs> New York Times, yeah. bestseller. One of the reasons it's so realistic is, you know, like Vigo, for exa example, like, lived the role. Like, right. he starved himself. Uh, like people tend to do for movies. It seems to be a <laughs> yeah. thing these days. Yeah, they really get um, dig deep. He really, you know, he's a method actor, so he starved himself. He lived like a bum for a bit, apparently. He was kicked out of a diner <laughs> during the making of the movie because he looked like a vagrant. <laughs> Again, suffering for your art, and he right. did, and it pays off in this movie. Right, and we're boiling here right now, suffering for Actually, what we're doing. not that bad. It could be worse. <laughs> I'm pretty hot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Light a few candles, you know, I think. Turn the lights off. Yeah. We gotta watch it with somebody. This is a hard movie to watch yeah. by yourself. Last time I watched this movie, it was by myself, and it was like, it, it was... It's tough. It was, Afterwards, I was like, oh, man, I'm bummed <laughs> out here. Yeah. Like, fuck. But you won't be disappointed. No. no. Very good movie. Yeah. So check out The Road. Yeah.